Yes! Yes! Content. Now, as I'm sure you've noticed, there's no hope for our species. But I do have this folder on my computer called blob underscore win. And I just feel like if I went into this folder, maybe something good would happen. Well, I was supposed to go into peace of mind hyphen windows. The thing is, it's so sketchy looking. Welcome back to my itch.io series where I search for the best game I've ever played. At some point in the distant past, I downloaded tons of files off itch.io's website. Many of them are runnable executables that may or may not be a virus, so inside Windows No Editor, there's repair.exe. Now this is theoretically a game. <laughs> um, should I run repair.exe? I'm so skeptical. Well, as mentioned, life is terrible. It's not going to get, relatively speaking, it's not going to get much worse if I delete everything on my computer. Repair.exe. Just fucking run it. I'm ready, baby. Okay, we've lost the screen. We didn't need that screen. <laughs> there was nothing good was happening on the screen. What else you got for me? Unbelievably, there's actually a game in here. And this is it. <laughs> and it, and this is the game. I'm getting strong phone home vibes off this game. By the way, this video is a sequel to a different video. Well, in my search for the best game I've ever played, is this it? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, I've picked up a laptop with extremely good carrying fucking physics right here. Now what? Let's see what's on TV. Notlonely.com. <laughs> Don't give me this bullshit. <laughs> You you can't play the sketchiest.exe on, on the planet and not have it just mock you the whole fucking time. Well, <laughs> I've got a knife which I can only wield at myself. And there's something in the garage. Do you want a knife? I think I reduced its health. I think I did it. Do you want a microwave? Throw the microwave into the into the interdimensional portal in the garage. The bar went up. Oh, we're getting there. <laughs> this is way easier than phone home. Oh, look, have more knives. You healed the spirit. <laughs> Play again or quit? Ah, uh, <laughs> I mean, we completed the game. Oh, oh, it, it's different. This time we have to give them books, family and tea, and it dislikes technology. Does that mean if I give them microwave? Oh, I actually lose health just for touching the microwave. Well, to be fair, this is a bit like Phone Home, a game that I really liked the last time I started playing random.exe files. <laughs> um, but this, this is better than Phone Home technically because you can see, you can move, there are very few phones. But, very limited content, like Phone Home was like an hour of content. Admittedly, that content was stumbling around, blindly picking up phones. <laughs> and we know that if you eventually succeeded, all it did was turn everything into phones. But, it was better than this, okay? So, of the two stumbling about an empty house, touching things games I've now played <laughs> in recent history, this is easily the worst. Look at this painting of an owl. That's actually pretty good. It's such high detail. You could this game really does benefit from being made in Unreal Engine 4. It's surprisingly like high quality. I guess I guess they just didn't put a game into it. <laughs> There's really no game available, but they spent a long time making this great 3D model of a house. My uh, my prediction, my, my prediction for why this game exists is that somebody was making like a virtual tour for a house like for work. And they ended up making this, like, over months to try and sell this model of house which was being mass-produced in some suburb. And then you know, it fell through. They stole the files from the company and decided to use this really high-quality modeling system they'd got. I don't, to, to make a game where you give a laptop to a, to a shiny thing in the garage, and that's the game. There's no challenge. Well, I suppose there is a challenge because there's a time limit, but it's not exactly difficult. 
<laughs> like, I could probably still complete the game right now, but there's an even better option in this game. <laughs> oh, it, it wanted to run the game in VR. It was trying to run it in VR. Oh, that was a VR game. That makes me even more sure that this was for selling a property, because they do do, like, VR tours sometimes when, when property companies are really bored, and they have so much money. Like, they have to do something to justify the fact that they're being paid for doing almost nothing. They might try and make a VR simulation of their house, like, a really expensive and pointless thing to do that almost nobody could even use. So yeah, that, that's why I think that that's that. Uh, that's why I think, okay? I think therefore I am, but, but, but we're working on that. We're trying to find solutions to that problem. Let's go up from peace of mind and go back into Blob Win. Blob Win won't betray me. I was called Blob the Burp.exe. Now we're fucking talking. Here's a game. 144p resolution. Don't sweat it. You're not alone. This is the absolute opposite of the previous game. <laughs> Feed your pet peeve. Own it. Do one thing today. Call a loved one. Well done. Mute eggs. Alone time may help you think. This game's so much better than all of the other games. I accidentally full screened it. I say accidentally, this is probably for the best. It looks much better like this. At last, something I can just put on my fucking computer screen at all times. <laughs> I can just leave this here now. There, I've made my PC much better. <laughs> I was really hoping my PC would get bricked so I'd have an excuse not to use it. Instead, now it now this is on the screen all the time. This is a definite improvement to my day. Thanks to whoever made this file that I somehow have. I actually can't get out. I can't get out. Alt Enter doesn't unfull screen it. I think I might have double clicked before to full screen it, but it's not working. I don't know. Cool. <laughs> cool. Well, I effectively have bricked my PC now. Now it's stuck like this. I hope it's still recording behind this. Well, this is good. I guess this is what I wanted. <laughs> Next up, to enhance the fun even further, Windows. We're gonna play Windows, with which has a Mac OS version. Windows, please. Video .exe. I'm so convinced to play it. Okay, I get it. We pick up keys. We go through doors. We do all these things to ourselves. Love, ear to heart. I tried my best. I really did. In the end, well, who cares? One little boy with sad. That's all we have anymore. Little boy with sad. Oh, here comes the parallax layer. <laughs> oh no. I suppose I am having some trouble comprehending the uh, constantly rotating. Fuck the constantly rotating camera. Uh, the the many the lot of the large amount of text. Uh, that's on the screen, some of which is an enemy. <laughs> Overall, it's definitely a video game. This is it. A game... F this is a game from even before my time. Way before, like, user interfaces and graphics, and, and like, the idea that a game should be played has had been developed. This this is really it's just so it's just, I, my mind is blown by the fact it's loading the whole UI just to tell me that the game isn't running. Okay, use new planet to start, and here we have a UX concern. What the fuck is new planet? Is it a button? Is it one of the pictures? I mean, we, we can act, we can practically play the game without the game being in progress. What's this? Something's happening. Ocean currents, and it's giving me this graph. Different current vectors. What's, oh my god. Oh my god. I don't... This looks like, simultaneously, the most interesting program I've run ever on my computer ever. But it's the worst designed program I've ever run on my computer, so I can't even tell what it is. <laughs> insect. There's a button that says Insect 315 has appeared here. It, it, it might, it's even harder for me to play this because it's running in the world's smallest resolution. Like, it's running a certain goddamn 40 pixel resolution from the past. So maybe I've zoomed into it generously for this video, but I don't know. There's something, there's a bit of rainfall here. I'm not allowed. That's not allowed in this time scale. <laughs> what? What? I'm so intrigued by what that could even mean. 
I feel like the UX itself is the game. There's some really complicated ass, detailed ass game behind this UX, but just exploring like what, what we could even be in is really entertaining. How about we use these window style buttons? File, new planet, it wasn't that hard. Orbital velocity of Mars, kilometers per second. Refer to Appendix C in the manual. I have to answer an astronomy question to even be allowed to start the fucking game? People say that something like Dark Souls is gatekeeping when it doesn't even tell you the controls or what to do. This is next level. It's actively trying to stop me playing the game. Only the most elite players will even be allowed to see the new game button. Christ. Is it eight? Ah. <laughs> uh. Yes! <laughs> what did I just do? Easy game. Energy 5000. We can play on Earth. I've heard of that planet. Okay, we're gonna simulate Earth. Time scale. Technology. Problems. The scenario takes place on Earth. <laughs> That's a huge problem. Oh my god. <laughs> I literally came onto my goddamn computer to escape this goddamn planet, and here I am, <laughs> back on this planet again, in Sim Earth. What the Earth? The, the, I, I don't, I'm so unsurprised that like being into computers was like a really niche thing because they made it really hard to like compute. Look at this. This is so something really cool is happening behind this. The blah blah blah. Nuclear winter. Close that. Alert, advancement slow, science needs energy. <laughs> Does it now? Do, am I responsible for plugging in the science? What's this in this other window back here? Uh, time's passing on Earth, and, and it looks like things are going great <laughs> to me. It was Is that a penguin? Oh, oh cl clicking on it gets rid of it. I think I just wiped out the penguins. <laughs> this planet's having a great time. There's a factory here. Is that the humans? Oh, you can right-click. Insects. A mammal city. <laughs> These insectoid mammals are having a great time on their city of grasslands. This is incredible. So detailed. There's a little sword here. There's also an Iron Age city uh, nearby from the Industrial Age city. It said this started in the year 1990. Are there Iron Age cities? I mean, the picture doesn't seem to represent an Iron Age city. Oh, no, there are no animals here. Magma, 15 centimeters a year. I mean, that, that, that's, that's going to get out of control if the magma's rising that quickly around you. Really feels like something's happening here, doesn't it? It doesn't feel like a game, but it really feels like something's happening. Let's activate heat. Okay, good. And it's raining sometimes. We can see where it's windy. That That's great. Sea flow. That's good. There's a fish here. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. No insects. There's an insect. Okay, there's, did I just put that insect? Oh, when it, wherever I click turns to insects. <laughs> I just realized I'm the fucking god of bugs. Well, that's good. Let's put them here. They, now there are insects everywhere. Oh my god, you can scroll the- <laughs> I thought that was the entire planet. If you move your mouse to the edge of the screen, it scrolls the camera. <laughs> I can't believe how good, to some extent, this game is. Oh, oh, it's Earth. <laughs> oh, that was like, that was America we were looking at. I couldn't tell what all that was. This is like Alaska. Okay. So, so if I go here and put something in Alaska, I would like Alaska to have a reptile here. This action exceeds your energy budget. Please wait for more Omega energy to accumulate. Okay, and <laughs> it plays sad music because I can't put the reptiles down. God damn it. I just wanted to simulate Earth. Okay, what's that? <laughs> Some, a large amount of the sea was on fire. Is this is this what the humans are doing? What if there was a f atomic test here? Interesting. <laughs> well, I just killed. I think I've wiped out the city and, and everything. Uh, okay, okay, we did it, and we can put it here as well. Okay, so uh, we're not allowed to buy insects, but I can nuke the planet. 
Is there a game? What's that over there? There's skeleton uprising. That's fine. What have we got here? Some sort of plane? Oh, there, are, there, there are people here. Is this my Omega Energy? It costs fifty energy to nuke something. How much does it cost to make a dinosaur? Four twenty. Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> Good. There's a duck in this swamp here in Sim Earth, and and the the mammal city in the industrial age is traveling. Yeah, it's it's like that uh, that Mortal Engines thing. Only only there are ducks. Good planet that we've simulated. Good. Will the planet just, like, die off? Is that what we're simulating? Like, the civilization will just destroy the planet eventually. I'm not interested to just look around and see, like, what, what is this? There's loads of cities in the atomic age. There's 10 million people down here in Southeast Asia somewhere. And there's a fish in the water there. A fish! Cool. It's lightly inhabited as well. <laughs> there's, a, there's a few people living in the... A, what's this arrow here? Prokaryotes! Oh, my God! I can increase something <laughs> in the biosphere model thermal oh i see as we can say reproduction rates up co2 absorption up okay so maybe we can undo climate change by by just turning the dial up on the trees okay we sorted that out that was easy what is this civilization civilization model uh science uh, turn that up all right good <laughs> that's better that might be what this warning was about. I needed to turn the science knob up. <laughs> it's so hard being God. There's so many knobs and dials on the controls of the world. What was that? Something just exploded in the middle of the rainforest. Is this India, that little triangle? I, I think God needs to get glasses. He can barely tell what's going on. That might explain a lot, actually. God only sees the world as, as this tiny, like, 100 pixel wide simulation <laughs> with loads of weird squares all over it. God doesn't know. You think God can hear your prayers? This is what God goddamn sees. <laughs> He's just like, oh, the sea. Nothing lives in the sea. Right, that seems legit. There must be some animals in the sea. There you go. There were some eukaryotes in the sea. And also a mammal city traveling in the sea. What does that even mean? <laughs> There's some Bioshock ass eukaryote bacteria down there having a great time. I mean, something's happening on this planet. The, the population seems to be going down. The sea is going down, which is a bit worrying. Where's. Why are we losing the sea? Uh, the CO2 took a big dip. Or some sort of like temporary ice age or something. Looks like we need a bit more. Can we get some more things up here? Oxygen, stable, that looks good. CH4, is that methane? Maybe that's that's looking good. How's the biomass going? Oh, there was a huge die-off. I I don't think we ran the planet very well. Is this because of the nukes? War war comes and goes. Plague comes and goes. It's not that polluted. Maybe uh, food supply is gone. Diversity gone. Okay, everything's dying. What we need is to help the planet out by just throwing some dinosaurs into the mix here and there. There we go. I'll use my omega energy. Oh, or too much Omega energy, and boom. The planet should be fine now. What else have we got? Volcano. Just needs a couple more volcano. Oh, oh, we wiped out a lot with that volcano. Nice. And it's going to gradually come back. I see, yeah, like, the ash is clearing. We covered half of Eurasia in goddamn ash. But it's going to just gradually go away, leaving nice prime land. There you go, grass. It's 12 degrees. It rains sometimes. There are no animals here. The magma only rises at 15 centimeters a year once again. Oh, this must be like the Himalayas. Altitude 8,000 meters. This program is so interesting. I have no idea what's going on, but it just seems great. If somebody could make this, but good, I would be really interested in that. Like, like say you could zoom out the map, may, may, maybe increase the level of detail slightly, <laughs> so you can so so you can tell what's going on even a small amount. Okay, I love the concept of this game, but its presentation is so poor. I just I just don't even nearly know what what's going on. You could even add a main menu. You could go absolutely goddamn hog wild and add a main menu. That would be amazing UX <laughs> improvements. Sim Earth. Somebody make the, even just take the code that's doing the simulation and just change the UI. That would probably be fine. Well, it's all pretty good. Atmosphere. How's the atmosphere going? We've got cloud. We've got cloud. We've got greenhouse effect. So if we just be like, hey, greenhouse effect. I want quite a lot of that. Let's let's prompt. Let's have that and and no albedo. Let's heat this thing up. Solar input. We're making the sun bigger. Cloud albedo down. No clouds. Okay. Let's check out how the good old UK. 
where I am right now is going, oops, I, I volcanoed it. <laughs> I, f I forgot I had volcano assigned to the left mouse button. That's probably for the best. Okay, that's probably for the best. That's how God rolls. He's like, what's going on down there? Oops, made a volcano. Fuck. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> no, 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 all part of my plan, you see. Okay, so UK's gone. Well, is the magma going to create new life? Yes, now now there's a huge desert instead of the sea. So, you know, this is all bad. Europe's just this huge desert. This is going great. There's even a desert up here. Is this supposed to be Skanderweja? I think my new climate change plan is going great. Yeah, Greenland is also just a desert with no animals. But then... Okay, why is the Sahara Desert so fucking thriving then? I don't know what we've done to this planet. We've really screwed it up. The Sahara is shrinking rapidly. The, the desertification has moved exclusively north. I guess having the volcanoes go off has just, has just really screwed the climate in like specific ways. So now it's just out of control. How is the population not going down more? How is it not going down more? Super volcanoes. Super climate change. Let's make it worse. Meteor strike here. Okay, what do you think about that? Is it going to cause like a global winter or something, or do we need more? It only costs 50 points to strike with a meteor. It costs 315 points to add insects. Why are insects such a big goddamn deal? And now I can't even do that. I can just spend it and the insects don't appear. They're just dying off instantly. Maybe it's too hot. Okay, it looks like the most economic way to play the game is to pull out the meteor generator and be like, okay, we get rid of that. Let's just, just stop it. Just stop it. I'm making great cash doing this. It's really economically efficient, right? We've gotten rid of most of it. Are these meteors or are they comets? It's creating water. M maybe they're comets. Okay, global flood time, global flood time. <laughs> you know how God likes his global floods. This is how he did it. He only did it because it was so goddamn cheap <laughs> on the options menu. We can get rid of all this, right? I hope you guys got in your boat earlier. Uh, I've, did I tell you about the boat? Uh, I think I think I sent the email. It might still be in the drafts. <laughs> you got to make a really big boat, guys, because I found this new great idea. And I'm too poor to blow up the world. Right, let's get rid of China quickly. Get rid of all that. We've got to get rid of this as well. Right, there we go. Right. I want to add a couple of volcanic eruptions here, here, maybe here. Uh, what, can we create an island chain? So let's take this bit of water and put a few volcanoes down here like this. Oceans boiling off, reduced temperature. I just want to see if I can make an island chain. It actually pauses the game to tell you that as well. It really wants me to reduce the temperature. It's, it's harassing me so hard. So if you're wondering how is this Europe, how Europe's doing? Uh, the Atlantic Ocean was turned into a desert. What is this? Arctic. We've somehow created this cold zone where it's 17 degrees Celsius. What? Some sort of cold hot zone. We've got this new hot ice thing going on where, where all the ice is really hot for some reason. Everything's a desert. The Atlantic's gone. But South America, doing okay. That's pretty good. There are actually there are millions of people. There's still like 15 million people in Australia. The great Eurasian desert slash hot ice field. These ice fields are so hot. 25 degrees C. It never rains, but it's still covered in ice. How have they achieved that? There's a human city here. How are five million people in this little jungle tile in the middle of the desert because it just about still rains? Inc Is that a new city? Did they just make that one up in the swamps? These humans are really hanging on. Despite there being massive cities everywhere, planes flying all over the place, according to the life class ratio graph, everything is eukaryotes. <laughs> it's eukaryote. We've got some sort of bacteria in the atomic age that have, have now taken over the world. This is this is some pretty good stuff. This is much better than I thought it was. I thought it was humans I was ruling over. The humans died off long ago. It's single-celled life forms with planes. <laughs> the eukaryotic life forms rule the world, flying around in their many jets. The atmospheric pressure is dropping. We're actually losing the goddamn atmosphere on this planet. There's a lot of CO2. Civilization collapsed. The planet falls back to evolutionary development. I mean, that's good. Oh, like time has sped up because nothing's happening. It's speeding up time. Biomass, gone. Diversity, gone. Food, gone. Great. Well, now what do we do with this horrible planet we've created? 
Well, I mean, if we're now 5 billion years in the future, we should be... Oh, quick update. You might have noticed we got cut off there because <laughs> the game and the recording software crashed. I was just saying that the sun... Like, at 5 billion years in the future, the sun should be expanding to destroy the Earth. And as I thought that, Earth was destroyed, God was kicked out, the simulation's over. So there you go. <laughs> I mean, we started this video with some with some depressing moods, thinking about how, like, life is hopeless and terrible. Well, now we know we've run the simulation, and we can confirm that yes, life is hopeless. Except for the eukaryotes. That being organisms whose cells have a nucleus. So, <laughs> if anyone watching this video has a nucleus in their cells, I've got some good news for you. Your tribe, your lineage of the, the complicated chemical reaction of reproducing protein strings that we call life, your particular version of that will be still thriving in billions of years in the future if you do identify as cells with a nucleus, but that, that's enough of an identity for me. <laughs> Next on Devin's vocal warm-up performances, a story. A woman who couldn't have been younger than her mid-fifties, gripping a cane, walked with relative ease down a hill to the mouth of a cave. Relative to what? To the mouth of a cave. <laughs> Pausing to scrutinize the plywood boarding up the entrance. Beside it, a man sat in a wooden rocking chair, backwards onto the brick wall around the plywood, his arms crossed and a cap covering half his face as he slept. The length and width of her coat gave off a certain aura. Ooh. <laughs> her salt and pepper hair was put up, what does that mean? Was put up in a bun and she looked cross, grey-blue bags seeping beneath her eyes. <laughs> Is that is that does, is that what it means to look? Cr I can't read things non-literally because I have that disease. She wore a full suit. She meant business. <laughs> I'm here on official business. <laughs> what? This is the certain aura she gives off. <laughs> she walked in wearing a full a full business suit, although she was covered in various tabletop condiments for some reason. <laughs> and she had two hooks under her eyes on which her luggage was being held. Open up, I've not all day, you know. The man jolted from his sleep. Despite the sedentary nature of his vocation, he seemed exhausted. Aye, and who ye be to interrupt my beauty rest like a bleeding klaxon? I presume this is a pirate. I will not repeat myself. Oh. <laughs> I'm willing to tell you what I'm doing while you're asleep, but while you're awake, that would be a waste of my time. Now just do the thing that I said while you were asleep. <laughs> I will not repeat myself. He grabs the paper and stares her up and down. Well, get on with it, won't you? She tapped her foot twice and began pacing back and forth. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're not willing to wait like two microseconds? <laughs> What a sodden way. <laughs> what is that? I don't understand. I haven't read any books, so I don't really know like how writing works anymore. He skimmed the document for the necessary information and began crumpling it up to put in his pocket before the woman demanded, Throw that thing away! What use for my information could someone like you possibly have? <laughs> what? I think... I, th I think this is Kafkaesque, okay? <laughs> This is what you do, this is what you, you, you get out the old Kafkaesque stamp, you put the Kafkaesque stamp on the text, now it's fine. He peered at her with a scowl, then took a bite out of the paper. <laughs> Delicious document. This is a real power move, when someone's like, could you please delete my personal information? You, you don't delete it, you consume that personal information. <laughs> Your personal information is merging with my personal information. Do you feel violated, madam? I presume that's what this character is supposed to sound like. Okay, so he says something weird about merging personal information. He lights a cigar and then burns the document. But that was the document proving that she was allowed to go into this, this cave, right? Okay. Well, let's see where, where the drama goes from now. He offers her a plastic bag and she says no. Okay, that's at the end of that. Very well. He groggily bent over and grabbed an axe by the stainless steel of its cheek. Hmm. Lip, don't you, isn't there a handle? Is this just an axe head that he's got to hold in his hand? Limping over to the fence, he grumbled, 
Stand clear. You know what's best. <laughs> just, a, just a slightly unusual way of saying this, the thing he's trying to say there. And I am a writing critic. With might like oxen and the aimlessness of the blind hunter, he vivisected the bowing plywood. <laughs> what? I mean, again, an interesting way of putting it, but I feel like it doesn't say what what you wanted that to say. Vi doesn't vivisection have a specific meaning that does not at all <laughs> apply? As in, like, he was performing experiments on the on the plywood, uh, so ethically questionable experiments on the plywood <laughs> with his axe, splinters whisking away to prickle the man and the woman's skin. <laughs> They're just standing right there, getting absolutely blasted by waves of splinters. They don't care, just, just let them all stick in there. She wiped the bits away from her tailored suit with irritation. You don't have to stand so goddamn close. This guy is, is waving an axe about with the aimlessness of a blind hunter. If he's gonna vivisect the plywood, just just imagine what he's gonna do to you, <laughs> okay? By the time he returned to his position and planted his rear back into the rocking chair, charred and destitute from the passing of time. <laughs> is, is this a deliberate ambiguity? In that this this little like subsection, it's not clear what part of the section before it could be referring to. Like, is the chair charred and destitute? Like, has it been on fire? Was it his rear charred and destitute? Or, or is this in a sort of Kafka-esque dream mode? It's saying that that event that just happened represents a very long passing of time. Like, maybe that was a hundred years, that, that sequence while, while he was hacking, hacking the board. But the woman, the woman was already... Here's, here's a writing tip, which only really applies to writing that's being read aloud, as it is here. Having this section, this part of the sentence, links up to this part at the very start, so they're like as far away in the sentence as they can be from each other, which maximizes the difficulty of that sentence being read aloud in the first reading at the very least. And that's something I actually care about as someone who reads sentences aloud without reading them prior constantly. Having stuff further down in a sentence change the meaning or context of something towards the beginning, or even vice versa, can be a problem. By the time should move to here in the sentence. You just say, he returned to his position. By that time, the woman was already 16 paces inward. The exact same sentence, but it's easier to read. All right, Wh whoever wrote this did not intend for me to be reading this aloud to you, clearly, clearly. But we've almost, we've almost finished, so let's try and get to the end. He could hear the clomping of her stilettos <laughs> upon the limestone deposits layering the ground, echoing out of the cave's mouth Though, like the greyhound who was born under the watchful eye of its owner, these sounds wouldn't travel far. What? <laughs> what on earth is that a reference? Is, does that mean something? The greyhound who was born under the watchful eye of its owner. So if you watch, if you watch your dog being born, they won't travel far. <laughs> Think about that. Is that, some, is that a proverb that's been translated from a different language? I mean, I mean, maybe. Well, I, I'm, what, what's, what's the actual literal point in the scene of mentioning this? So the sound of her walking doesn't travel far. It's, it sort of sounds like it's ominous, like there's some reason why the sound should disappear. The jackdaws, perched along the branches of the trees nearby, settled into their nests, isolating their kin from the elements. <laughs> Another very sinister way of, of saying they were roosting on an egg, I suppose. Perhaps ye will be. <laughs> what? This this was said by an unspecified character. Perhaps ye will be. Now, <laughs> a cold wind <laughs> blew through, but the man didn't seem to notice. Dying leaves rustled about, leaving their old resting places for new ones. Perhaps ye will be. <laughs> that seems like an iconic phrase. This has got to be a reference to something, possibly even earlier in this book. <laughs> no, you just read the end. Just read the end. Let's read the, the last paragraph of the, the previous chapter. Ruby took three steps back, then four, then five more, and then ten? All right. <laughs> you got a word count to make. All right. 
keep describing. Okay, we, this character needs to take 100 steps, but let's, re let's really let's slice this up. First, she took seven steps. She took three steps. She then took 13 steps. 26 steps later, she was still stepping. <laughs> Just, and, and this happened at least another four times. But after that, there were like 16 additional and so on. Now, where was I? And as they did, Joyce Melange <laughs> began to float upward. Oh, Joyce Melange. She's had a hard life. <laughs> but finally, she's been taken up. It was too late. Ruby was trapped. For one after another, any direction they ran, grounded or not, the plants and flowers all wilted away, as if either in fast-forward or retrograde. What? I see the problem. It's because, because I have scientific education. I believe that retrograde was like this definition, but it, it could kind of mean backwards. So they're kind of saying, kind of saying the plants are wilting backwards. <laughs> So they're not wilting. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's run. Th let's run through this again. The gr the grounded or not, the plants and so, so some of the some of the plants are flying. They w they all wilted away as if either in fast forward or retrograde. So some of them wilted away really fast, and some of them wilted away so slowly that they were actually moving backwards and unwilting. They just really wanted to, to make this little dichotomy of saying, f like, fast or slow. But it doesn't make sense, because the, the remarkable thing is that it's fast. So you can't mention that it happens slowly, because it wouldn't be noticed. And you definitely can't say it happened backwards. More literary analysis. Well, this isn't literary analysis. This is like grammar analysis. or just sentence. Just, I'm just looking at the fucking words. Delete that. Delete that. That's my editor's note, right. The moribund, moribund bodies of others made themselves known from the beyond of beyond, their eyes gouged out and molten pus spewing from the apertures left over, wherein brains wrapped themselves around minds, around tongues, around torsos, teeth chattering and falling upward, legs and bowels contorting, prostrating, mouths chirping, howling, wailing and whispering, all skin, no skin. Sinews and flesh gestalted, gestalted. What the fuck? Every everything nearing all being, all. Yeah, I don't know how that leads into this next chapter. <laughs> so in the previous chapter, poor Ruby and Joyce Melange were obliterated in a plant-killing time field, and then a horde of zombies appeared from the beyond of beyond. And, and sort of exploded in, into some sort of miasma of flesh. <laughs> I guess, did they die? Maybe they died. Anyway, well, perhaps, perhaps she will be. I do feel compelled to find out more information. There's all this other text. Here's Ruby Mayweather, who was just mentioned. So, spoilers, <laughs> and Joyce Melange. They both died, but long before they died in some sort of haunted cave, they had this conversation. Where are we? Deer Hoof Tunnels, probably about a kilometre and a half below the Earth's surface by now. Have you ever been here before? <laughs> this is a really late time in the, in, the, in the walk to ask, oh, by the way, where are we? Didn't you notice we've been walking, like, underground, straight fucking down for over a kilometre? It's as if we joined the scene at the same time as the characters did, and perhaps that is what the author intended. But let's see what else they have to say. Have you ever been here before? No. As you're now aware, I know some people who have. <laughs> hmm. Right. Um, got any kids? <laughs> the other character said. <laughs> is this... Okay, Ruby Mayweather is the nothing but questions character. So Ruby refuses to respond <laughs> to what Joyce Melange is saying. This ominous thing. Not yet. So you want kids then? Not yet. How far down do the tunnels go? Well, nobody really knows. How can that possibly be? For each of Joyce's terse, exacting answers, Ruby had five or more broad questions already queued up. Does anybody live down here? Do you really have to ask? Ruby doesn't seem like the, the sharpest tool in the shed. Ruby asked everything. And so Joyce told them everything. That's a much better... This, this is someone who does not want to pad out the word count anymore. 
just skip over it. <laughs> Instead of listing every possible question under the, it, where every answer gives you five additional questions, let's just say they kept walking, they said literally everything they could possibly say, so no further conversations need be mentioned. Now let's get on to business. You could probably cut everything after that sentence out. <laughs> you could probably leave it there. That might be all you need. Like, now that Ruby's told Joyce everything, or vice versa, do we, the reader, really need to learn everything as well? Let's just cut all that out. Cut all that out, blah, blah, blah. And then they die in a zombie explosion at <laughs> the end. Here, yeah, there you go. And that's where they die in a zombie explosion at the end. <laughs> so we all know, it doesn't matter really what they were talking about. They, they were having a fun chat about who should have kids and where were they anyway? Why are you leading me into this pitch black underground tunnel over a kilometre underground? That's a long fucking way to be walking down underground. Feels like I should say something about what's happening. By the way, where are we? And who are you? Well, wait a minute, do you have kids? Forget what we were just saying. Forget the tunnels thing. I've got a much more important question. Do you want to have kids? Tell me now. Specifically now is the time I decided to ask you that question. Now it seems more important than before. Hello, it's your boy Offy D. Just back at it again, criticizing the writing of my favorite writer. <laughs> Devin... Raposo. <laughs> yes! There's a lot. There's a lot in the Devon Raposo <laughs> cinematic universe. We actually, I hear, I found this thing called High Sun Shallow Stream at devonraposo.com. Just browsing devonraposo.com of a morning. And it has various stories. And I saw this law bible, which was quite interesting. So I thought we'd take a look at the law bible. A series of Google Docs about the, the, the broad law of the Devin Raposo cinematic universe. Oh, here are some of the guys mentioned who, who was lost to the Deer Hoof Tunnels after, after falling in love at a convenience store. So that's the summary of what that, that story was, I guess. That's what Joyce was talking about. The, the characters really don't get equal consideration. I mean, there's D Dimitrios von Kithriotis, who created, discovered, fabricated the Never There chain while scrapping to rehabilitate his Down On My Luck bazaar stall. And then there's Kalione von Gutenstein III, a guy. <laughs> no, I mean, this character's not important. <laughs> Why put them in the list? Oh, and, uh, let's list every, every incidental person who walks past the scene. The Boundless Riots, a series of riots which started in 1374 BR, before riots. <laughs> what, wait, so the riots lasted for 1,374 years? Is that what you're saying? Sometimes known as Minus 43 TL, or Today's Life. Sometimes known as Modern Life, or ML, by a group of Enlightenment-style big thinkers that just hang out in a cafe all day. Why do those goddamn... <laughs> Neo-Marxists want to change today's life to modern life in the date system. There's some serious law in that thing about the, about the old man on a rocking chair standing outside a boarded up cave. Why didn't they put a door on that fucking cave? Why do you have to have a guy with an axe who opens the cave when, when the business people from head office come to go inside? <laughs> But a door, just have a lock. Why don't you give head office the key and then you have to hire a guy on a rocking chair who who is like ch charred and deteriorating or something to, to guard this haunted cave where you explode if you walk inside. Oh, here's some more juicy lore. Inside those tunnels is exile, a, hallucin a hallucinogenic barbiturate, which I can say. So that's why the businesswoman was axing her way into the tunnels to find the sweet, sweet drugs that, f for some reason, mysteriously originate deep within the tunnels. That seems so goddamn legit. <laughs> the polyhedron for the depths. Those who worship something said to be living beneath the waters of the flooded Thorothair. <laughs> they claim to be preparing for an all-out war against the Blatavites by growing out their ranks like the tortoise who stakes out its victory through attrition. <laughs> is, that, is that another like, strange foreign proverb that I don't understand? The tortoise who stakes out its victory through attrition. That classic metaphor. <laughs> D does a tortoise stake out its victory through attrition, though? I mean, my, my, my response to this phrase is, like, how, does any element of the phrase mean anything? <laughs> Which is a great, a great response to any phrase. What's going to happen next is I'm going to stop 
reading Devon Raposo's lore. You, you, you say to me, well, oh, you're like a tortoise staking out its victory through attrition. And I say, ha 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 ha, well, you, my friend, are like the greyhound whose master watched it be born. And in turn, <laughs> we, we both feel that our point has been made very clearly, <laughs> okay? We all know what we're trying to say precisely, and that there's no ambiguity to it whatsoever. Another day, the search for the perfect video game continues. I have so many itch.io games, it's stupid. I can't remember when I downloaded this new set of things, but I remember looking at the page count. I have a couple of hundred, I think like maybe 200 itch.io pages of games, and there's like 20 or 30 games <laughs> on each page. I've gone through, I think, six pages so far to bring you the collection I've got here. And this is undermining my hope. I really thought I was going to find the perfect game somewhere in the Itch.io library. Last time, <laughs> I don't think any of the games I played in the previous video <laughs> were good. I can't remember anymore. But this game does have best in the title. So we're just going to go through. I guess these are in the order I downloaded them. No particular order. We're playing bestjury.exe. We're here in the bestjury. We're here in the bet. Uh, type something in. Name. Is this me? <laughs> This is me. I am looking handsome today. Do we have to come up with a name? Are we going to be scored? Is this a game? I'm confused. <laughs> I'm immediately like, is this a game? Who's watching me? Does it matter what I write into this text box? I'm, I can't. I can't. Maybe it's just for fun, okay? I'm going to call this bird the bird with a skelly. You don't get much space to name it. What if I wanted to give it a full-ass Latin name? Okay, this sucks. This sucks. <laughs> and they had the gall to put best in the title of the game. Like, I could almost get on board with the concept, but you give me, like, ten characters? I can write quite a lot in the diet. Okay, I'll, I'll name it S. Diet. By the way, the actual... Y you've got to be kidding me. I thought it was going to let me type a paragraph. I was going to explain the real name of the... Submit. That's bullshit. That's absolutely fucking bullshit. And then and you just keep doing it? <laughs> what? Well, well, we have to just stop there. How am I supposed to type bullshit if the limit is so low? There is enough space to write bullshit in. Okay, submit. What? <laughs> I'm closing this. Can't believe I had to sign a license agreement <laughs> to get in here. You agree not to complain if you think of any words with more than ten letters in them to write, okay? Or if you want to write, like, four words, you're in trouble. Like, the name box, these other boxes go to here. You could at least have some sort of symmetry in the design, but having the name box extend to, like, here? Come on, give me a few extra characters. And But this is like a, a, a 420 by 340 window or something. We could have this way bigger. Let's see how much we can write in the characteristics. Look, you fox. The characteristics of this beast... Yeah, yeah, just stop. It just, if I press enter, pressing enter does not take you to the next line. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, I had a lot to say about this game and it was all terrible. I hated it. Let's move on to the next game. I will submit this though. <laughs> okay, submit. When this license ends, you must stop all use of the application and destroy and erase any copies you have. <laughs> Why do I have to do that? <laughs> I'm not... Okay, just to spite you, bestry, I'm not even gonna delete it. I'm gonna leave the folder. Alright, what's, what's next? Fatbearweek.zip. This promises to be a lot better. <laughs> Well, I guess I got what I wanted here. Am I supposed to be killing these rabbits? I'm not quite sure. Uh, it's a game where you're a fat bear. And you roll around. I mean, it's pretty good. It controls pretty well. The graphics are good enough. This is fine. You could put this on a console or something. This is, this is of a higher standard than your average Ichigo game. This is no phone home right here. This feels like it was supposed to be a game <laughs> to some extent and that some effort went into it. Although that said, it's extremely small. Oh, there was a timer. Okay, I didn't even realize that. <laughs> well, we did it. We got three stars <laughs> in Fat Bear Week. Pretty high score. I didn't get any glowing mushrooms. I didn't even see any goddamn glowing mu Okay, whatever. We did it. Uh, takes you back to the menu. Pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good.
<laughs> I guess it's a very short game. What happens if I just click bears? Oh, we can switch to a different bear. Oh, we haven't unlocked the other bears. Okay. You can be Winnie the fucking Pooh. There's no way they have permission to put that in their game. Excellent work, Fat Bear Week. You did it. We have discovered the greatest copyright infringement of all time. Well, this is the best game I've played today <laughs> of the two. It's time to play some Hippo on Elm Street, which... Which is a game of sorts. It's an HTML page, I guess. It's a not very s scary story, so that's nice. Anyway, now it says you're underneath the sofa. Your nest of stolen socks is here. Beyond the sofa is the living room. Cool. Cool. <laughs> that's not a verb I recognize. It's a really old school game. We're enjoying... Yeah, ba back in the before times, e like even before the point and click times, you had to write things into the PC to try and find content in games. This is even less advanced than point and click. So I have to type something that will cause a gameplay event to happen, and there'll just be some thing that you can type. Like it said, beyond the sofa is the living room. Go to living room. Something like that. That noun did not make sense in this context. <laughs> oh... Oh, oh. Oh, how about fuck you? Uh, fuck you? You can't see any such thing. <laughs> okay. I, I can't fuck you because I can't see you. You see? Okay. Well, thank you, hippo on Elm Street. Something about a hippo. Um, notice hippo. <laughs> it's not a verb I recognize. Uh, recognize verb. That's, that's not a verb I recognize. It says there's a scent of something delicious. Smell, smell, scent. You can't see any such thing. Uh, use nose. <laughs> I didn't understand that sentence. How do I smell the something delicious? Uh, follow, scent. Follow scent. That's not a verb I recognize. Uh, sniff. Wait, what? Something somewhere smells amazing. Your mouth waters at the thought. We discovered... I discovered some content in Hippo on Elm Street. <laughs> I made I made it respond. If you typed sniff, that, although, come to think of it, that doesn't even nearly help, like, even a small amount. <laughs> cool. How do I leave? I'm still under the sofa. Uh, leave sofa. I only understood you as far as wanting to leave. Um, leave life. <laughs> no, please. I wish this was a point and click game. At least it was a point and click game. You could probably click outside of the sofa and it would go there. Here, even if you think you know what to do, your chance of like actually making the game do it is even lower than in a point and click adventure game. Well, I'm glad this style of control of control scheme for games went away at some point. Just typing words and hoping that some sort of 1980s AI can actually pass what you're writing. All right, how about quit game? No, <laughs> I only understood you as far as wanting to quit. It understands that I want to quit, but unfortunately. I can't do that, Devin. <laughs> no, I'm trapped. Trapped under the sofa with the hippo on Elm Street AI. Well, this is my purgatory. <laughs> a lot of the games I downloaded in this recent batch aren't very good. I'm going to cut loads of them. I'm not even going to tell you about some of the games that I played here because they just sucked. They just straight up sucked. Why isn't Ichayo the complete gold mine that I thought it was? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm also dying. I've got this new this new friend who's joining me for this part of the commentary. This fun life form. It's co called Sarskov, and it lives inside me now. And it causes this disease from its actions inside me, whatever it's fucking doing in there, called COVID. So that's good, isn't it? Welcome back to playing Itch.io games. <laughs> Next game is called Space Madness 1.02. It's probably not by Devon Raposo, so we're not going to like it. Will it brick my PC again? We're just sort of waiting, hoping, really. <laughs> oh, it's not even going to let me run it. Okay, good. Good. I can't let you do that, Devon. Who's that? Is that you, Sarskov? <laughs> no. This is the voice of Devin Raposo. <laughs> oh, right. Is Devin Raposo... Portuguese or so? I, I, yeah, he was something, wasn't he? Yes. <laughs> Your brain has decided that Devon Raposo 
sounds like this. Can we get can we get Diego Luna to play Devin Raposo in this scene? I think that would be better. <laughs> Listen to me, I'm the real Devin, all right? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Luna, can you just read this script for a second, please? I need it for a thing. Okay, I'll, I'll read your script. Let's have a look. Hello, my name is Devin Raposo, and you are watching. This is content. All right, so he doesn't want to run Space Madness. Why don't you just do it anyway? <laughs> just run it. I hate my PC. Oh, it's an installer for something. Just install it. I don't care what it is. Uh oh, all characters appearing in this work are fictitious. <laughs> like this guy. Thanks, I was about to sue for libel. Space Madness, new game. What? No! No, th this can't be! This can't be! What about the rebellion? It's... It's a... Point and click adventure game! No! We have to free the Wookiees. Maybe they will play the point and click adventure game for us. You'll be just as bad as the Empire using Wookiees as slaves. They're living creatures. You can't have them play a point and click adventure game. Oh. While you were saying that, I fucking died. Are you happy now? <laughs> this is what will happen to the rebellion if if you complain <laughs> about uh, about point and click adventure games. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm dying in real life. Okay. Now Diego Luna is suing me for libel. <laughs> the, everything you see in this is content is a work of fiction. Any resemblance to any character is real, dead, or whatsoever you like. There's all there's a, an enormous coincidence that was pointed out enormously in the work and was exploited by the work itself for profit. There's still enormous coincidence. Is that is that an NFT? Is this sort of ancient caveman NFT monkey over there. Well, it's good that you just die <laughs> if you don't press anything. What? Well, that's sort of coming back to life and dying. The, the being dead animation runs out, so it has to replay it <laughs> if you're dead for long enough. Did they think I genuinely wouldn't input any buttons for, for that long? Who tested this trash? Whoever tested this didn't immediately break down and refuse to play the game when they realized they were testing a point-and-click adventure game. Let's see what sort of pointing and clicking we're doing. Oh. I got points! I got point! That's way better than most point and click adventure games. It gives you a number if you click on something. Whoa, okay. Okay, arcade style point and click adventure game. This could actually be a thing. There is still hope for the rebellion. <laughs> Look, Diego, you can't. Your voice acting is terrible. Having a number go up while you're pointing and clicking. That sure is something. Gives you the feeling like you're doing what you're supposed to do, which often is the problem with pointing and clicking. I can think of many uses for this. <laughs> oh, it's a rope. Yes, I can kill myself. <laughs> I've got an elastic rope, but I'm not afraid to use it. Uh, at the right click. Oh, you have to use the other click sometimes. They're really mixing up the gameplay, mixing and matching. You'd think using the left mouse button would get stale after a while, but they just absolutely blow your mind by bringing in the right mouse button. <laughs> but the only thing is, they take your voice. <laughs> Don't play it, they take your voice. I didn't read it. Fascinating. Can we walk off the screen, look at the sky? I can carry a lot, but even that's too big for me. <laughs> oh, I'm just a lonely cowboy, and the sky is too big for me. I wanted to point and click on the great blue beyond But it would have fit in my inventory Oh, oh, oh yeah Got those point and click blues Take it, Diego I got those point and click blues Okay, we found a hatch. Open the hatch with the glue. Open the hatch with the solar panel. A handle. <laughs> Use the handle with the hatch. I should think of something else. No! No! <laughs> but isn't, isn't that so off? You're not even gonna try. It's not even gonna say it doesn't work. That's just straight up not. 
Why does it give you a handle and then you find a door you can't open? I can't use these things together. Well, I, I can't use you together with me. Chainsaw the hatch. Don't be silly. Chainsaw the cactus. Why would I do that? <laughs> yes, we're back at it again. We point, we click, and the game delivers. It delivers disappointment. It delivers frustration. It delivers humiliation. Pointing and clicking. With nary a bit of fun to be had, the cliff doesn't look stable. I wonder if I can use that to my advantage. Again, another opportunity for suicide. Right, where's the rope? Use the rope. On the cliff, we can hang ourselves. No. <laughs> Denied even the freedom of death. This is the truth. Tyranny of the Empire. <coughs> <coughs> no. I've been playing this point and click adventure game since I was six years old. You don't think I know what it means? Something, something. Well, that was good, wasn't it? We all had a great time. Now, Space Mining Clicker. Windows is the game. Well, you know, with clickers, you're going to have an easy time. This is a, a strong variant on the point-and-click adventure game. A sort of point-and-click non-adventure game. It takes what I, l what I liked about the previous point-and-click adventure game, the fact that you could click and make a number go up, and it really focuses down on that. I'm assuming that's what it's going to do anyway. Oh, yes! Give me another. Ooh! This, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make a point-and-click-based game. Don't, don't hide things, you know, don't, don't be like, oh, there's a door with no handle, and all you've got is a collection of door handles. Is there any way to get past this puzzling puzzle? No, no, no. You click on the area highlighted where it says click here, and it says plus one. That's a game. It's not even a day, it's day zero. We, we haven't even progressed to it being the first day. Time has not begun, and yet I am already collecting precious plus ones. It's making this go up, or zero per second. I have to collect 50 ore. Well, it's going to be a thing where you get to the point where it starts collecting it for you, and you don't have to click anymore. Let's try and get to that point, then we can really, we can really sit back and not do anything. <laughs> Which is what we're all trying to do, just in life in general. I don't want to read that. This text is not very readable. Now we've reached the point where the game is playing itself. This thing pulls ore up and gives us some ore number. This ship comes by now and again and replaces your ore with credits. And then over here, you eventually buy things with the credits. You can get a potato farm. Why? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. That probably helps us mine the ore. I mean, potatoes are ore, aren't they? <laughs> when... Well, you really think about it. I don't know what he's talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Get out of here while you still can. Just be quiet, Diego. Potatoes are a kind of ore, or I'm going to start a mining gunner. Because like with normal ore, they're in the ground. They come in various levels of purity. They're often mixed in with other things. And you can f form them into ingots of sorts, which we call chips here in the, in the British Empire. Or fries, if you like. You know, just sort of blocks of potato compressed and processed for, for easy transportation. Yes, yes. I might have some potato ingots later on <laughs> to celebrate another hard day at the space mine. This isn't a game, is it? We're playing Shape Forms cassette. Fast forward loops. Is it just the, just the sounds of a cassette tape? Oh, yeah, play it. Yes. It's the sound of a cassette tape fast-forwarding. Thank you to Itch.io for providing me with this high-quality product. We've got some other variants. That one's a bit different. It doesn't even fill the entire WAV file. It stops. <laughs> God damn it. This is the worst collection of very small sound effects. There's loads more mechanism. Mechanism three. That's that's the stuff, isn't it? Bum 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 bum. Are you getting this, Diego? 
It's tricky to rock a rhyme, to rock a rhyme, to rock a rhyme. That's right on time. It's tricky, it's tricky, 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 tricky. It's tricky to rock a rhyme right on time. Tr -tr -tr tricky. <coughs> Well, we all had fun with Shape Forms cassette, I think. Hey, Devin, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I don't know, Diego. It's just, it's just the next thing. It's called Woodland Chasers. Oh, what, what is this screen? Wh where do I look? <laughs> where do I click? The middle one. Level one, level one, level one, zero, play. Terrible UI. Welcome to Woodland Chaser. <laughs> I mean, you'd think that they wouldn't be able to get away from you, but we're still fucking chasing those trees. <laughs> yeah, I'm a tree hunter, mate. <laughs> yeah, I've been on the prowl for those trees for years. The tutorial. Outside this tutorial, you're on your own, mate. <laughs> All right, you better enjoy this help. You don't get any help after this, mate. <laughs> You'll never catch the trees without me. Yeah? <laughs> Let me tell you that. Yeah, hey, yeah, we'll probably be fine. Oh, oh, I have to put my hand on the keyboard for this? Oh, God. Oh, skip. <laughs> Fly. Fly. No, no. Why didn't I do the tutorial? No. I'm already out of my depth. So, you actually have to avoid the trees. Why is it called Woodland Chaser? Look at that. Oh, there was something there. Oh, but it was right in front of the tree. I wonder if I could go through the tree. Or are we supposed to collect the trees? Let's find out. Oh, I died. <laughs> Well, I got the achievement for failing. That's generous of them. <laughs> That's generous of them to make that an achievement. Fly up to shoot. What? <laughs> what sort of control is that? Fly up to shoot? I am flying up. Fly up to shoot? What? That's so confusing. How is this game harder than Dark Souls? <laughs> oh, oh, we found some sort of skip. Back when it said, like, we're not going to help you after this, it, it really wasn't joking. I can't work out any of the controls or anything. It's not going very well. I can't even get to the end of the first goddamn level. Like, your health's draining the whole time and then you die before you get to the end. There must be something you were supposed to do to get more health. This was weird. Why is this so hard? I went back and read the tutorial. I don't get it. I legit... I'm too dumb for Woodland Chase... I Sorry, Woodland Chasers. Next game. It's called... That? <laughs> Read that. Now you know what it's called. Play. <laughs> I think you just look at it. <laughs> I think you just look at it. This is a game where you look at this. We could take this moon, make it bigger. Or small. You can't make it much bigger. <laughs> really limits the options for a game that's just about looking at something. Okay. Make it orbit faster. We complete the game. That's another, that's another quick one to get through. That was that was whatever that word on the title screen said. Well, we just played it. It's it's this as far as I can tell. Let's go. Another cursed day. Another chance to play Ichio games. I'm nearly there. I'm nearly through round two of all the random shit I download. It's been like <laughs> so many months since I downloaded this package. It's like someone else is doing this to me at this stage. <laughs> is it Diego? Are you? Is Diego still here? This is another time. I don't know if Diego's still here. <laughs> I'm always here, Devin. <laughs> what? That's not. That's not Diego. Who's that? Well, someone's here. The next game. I've already unpacked it. It's how about spikes? Okay. <laughs> Does it have to be that small? This is very low resolution. <laughs> Why do people on Ichio make actual Game Boy games and then release them as PC.exes? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Jump up and it. Oh, no. Oh, it's one of these things. It's one of these things where you can't get past the very first obstacle in the game. Wasn't there a controversy about something like this? Where someone was trying to play Cuphead and they, they couldn't get past the first thing where you have to jump over a platform? It's happening right here in How About Spikes. It kind of, th This platform kind of looks like it's in the background because the floor extends in front of it. No, no, no. It looks like you should be able to walk in front of this. Even my character model is partially in front of it when I walk up to it. No, no, no. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> is there a double jump? There's a double jump. Okay, there's <laughs> a double jump. That was nearly the end of the game. But no, there's a double jump. 
Well, I guess they could have told me about the double jump. There we go, it's fine now. This reminds me of playing games on like a Windows 95. You'd play little games like this. Anyone remember the game? <laughs> that game where you snowboard down a hill. It's kind of like this <laughs> in a very abstract sort of way. And there we go. How about them spikes? You just died. Oh, it's got a death counter. Please don't be a rogue-like. Oh, at least I don't have to go back because of the checkpoint. My corpse is still there. And it's sending something to me. Oh, your corpse attacks you. So it's a game where it gets harder the worse you are at it. Bang. The classic game design decision. Why do that? Just positive feedback loop that makes the game harder to play for virtually every player. Here. Oh, I was going to say, it really looks like you're supposed to jump in front of the environment to get to those platforms. What a red herring. There's a sign here telling me to do something. J? J? You want me to press J on the key? Are you are you serious? You want me to press J? Okay, how about spikes? That is terrible. <laughs> terrible. Okay, let's just say it was terrible. I, I just really want to get through all these games. We're, we're on the quest to find the best game ever. It's probably not this. The resolution is too low. Like, like already, I, I, it's taking up none of my screen. I can barely see what's happening on the screen. Really, can you full screen it? You can full screen it. Every time there's a problem with the game, it's actually a problem with me. It's always me. It's always a me problem, okay? Well, itch.io, one thing you need to do to make me like the game is overcome my incompetence, okay? I don't know that you can double jump. I don't know that you can full screen the goddamn game and it's way easier to see, okay? We're just begging here. We're begging for an itch.io game to be really good. To be fair, some games probably are really good, but I don't really have time to look at them. <laughs> okay, this is a very difficult search. Like, it needs to be immediately obvious that what I'm playing is the best thing I've ever seen. Oh my god, it's not this. It's not this. Whatever whatever this is, it's not this. What? This is such an old school installation. The way it puts a full screen image behind the installer. I haven't seen this since the goddamn Windows 98. Oh my god. And what is this file path it's trying to use? Instead of using slashes, it's using the yen sign. What does that even mean? <laughs> if this text is hard to read, please install. No. Please uninstall your life. I mean, it's hard to read because it's like 8 by 8 pixel text that's being blown up because I'm playing it full screen. The fonts located in the game folder and restart your game. Okay. Got a text box where it refuses to go to the right. It just refuses to go to the right. I think it should be multiple text boxes you have to scroll through and there should be huge gaps in the rest of the box. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Well, probably because it's like being translated from Japanese or something. I don't know. Dot, dot, dot. Press F5 to see screen options. Oh, you're still here? I thought I told you to go and install the fonts, fuckface. Okay, fine. And here we have the opening cutscene in which a rabbit walks up to a magic mirror. Surely we're in for a magical adventure. Dot 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 dot. Aha! Ah, okay. <laughs> we got rid of we got rid of the scene. Back to the text. Dot dot dot. This time five dots. Never before seen levels of not having any text in the text box. Let's see what else the game has to say. It's gonna take me so long to play the game in this rate if I'm gonna complain about every single text box. But I might as well. What is this we're fading up into? I needed more context for this game. What was it even called? I've already forgotten what it was called. I don't think I even looked at what it was called. Okay, there's a deer with a clock in its mouth, okay? Dot 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 exclamation mark. New levels of emoting. Well, while I have nothing to say about this happening to me, I am shocked. I, I'm, I'm shocked with how little I'm saying about this. Hey. <laughs> hey. We're in the game. Oh my god, it's so ugly. Hello, Offid 1080p. Here we go. This is it. This is this is the best game. We've been sleeping for quite a while. I was getting worried. Why is it so nightmarish? How on earth did you get so small? I know, please, please. Pixel graphics aren't that good. It's the future now. The exact same technique as how about spikes where it writes the controls in the background. A good idea, but harder to localize if you use actual text. Like, if you wanted to localize this, it would be a nightmare because it's written in English. Like, you'd have to change image files. Moving into the house, plagued by the town's largest mouse. <laughs> the woman went down the hall. Uh, oh, is this, is this like the Stanley Parable? <laughs> Stanley went down the hall into the yellow door. But, uh, but, but if I go over here and talk to this shelf, a large plastic... Plastic? 
How fucking tacky. A plastic chair. It's a plastic chair. Do we have anything that's not made of goddamn plastic? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't know what's going on. This isn't the best. This is like some sort of someone's personal nightmare made into game for. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's one of those indie games, the personal nightmare indie game where like, you, you have to sort of concentrate and take it quite seriously. It's not obviously the best game of all time, but really, what I'm what I'm sort of looking for is that I'll open the game and it'll be it'll just be like Sakura Wars Five. So long, my love. <laughs> That's really all I'm looking for. I don't, I don't, I don't really. Or just some sort of game design quest. Well, I'll be like, wow, that's interesting. I haven't seen that before. Well, here we are. we're back at it again with some sort of like NES Undertale inspired game where you wander around talking to plastic furniture and nothing happens. And then, and, but, but that's a point. That's an artistic point. It's not nothing's supposed to happen. You see, because because you're surrounded by plastic trapped in the haunted orphanage. But really, it was all my imagination and some sort of trauma. There's a black stain on the wall. Let's talk to it. You smell rat. Oh, I actually expected something more interesting than that. I thought it'd be weirder than that. No, I thought it'd be weirder than that. Next, we're playing Water. I think this is more like what I was looking for. <laughs> I think, you know, when you look at it, you think, okay, this is one of the best games I've ever played. Like, there's no there's no doubt in your mind when you look at it. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's, so, it's so good. Uh, W-A-S-D-C space? Hmm. Oh, it's a, it's two player. Oh, it's like the old Super Mario, or something, right? No, no, no. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it passionately. Oh my god, it's terrible. <laughs> Why does it say made with Game Maker Light? Do they really make you put a watermark on your games in Game Maker? Right, even like Unity, which is so powerful, is free, and you don't have to put any watermarks on it. <laughs> and now this appears. Upgrade Game Maker. We could have advertisers do. What an annoying game engine! Come, just use Unity. It does all the same things. It doesn't do that. Okay, never mind. Next, next thing. Super Chrome 0.3. What a low version number. It's gonna be so finished. Yes, I take a look. Then this better not be some bullshit. Better not be a pixelated roguelike. Made with Unity, you see? Oh, it's, it's a pixelated roguelike. Oh my... At least it's not necessarily a roguelike. Like, it's a bullet hell. Bullet hell could be an actual game. Maybe they play similar to roguelikes in that they're too difficult. So, like, you end up doing the same content over and over again for that reason, as, as we're going to experience right here. But, theoretically better than a roguelike on paper. Like, the, the theoretical potential of a bullet hell is, is higher than a roguelike for, like, customer value proposition, something, something. I'm making a very, a very real, a very real point I like, I like to imagine. I like to imagine what I'm saying is not only a valid sentence, but has some sort of meaning to the other humans who may hear the sentence. Collecting a lot of gold. <laughs> Getting a lot of flashing warnings on the screen. You know, that's just life. The only problem is that I'm so good that this game offers no challenge whatsoever. You thought you could beat me, the man who's never played a bullet hell, with your bullet hell game? It's too easy. I'm so good at pressing the baton. You can actually shoot those things sometimes. But the question is, what is the artistic interpretation? Is this a metaphor for getting a vasectomy? You know, it's always, it's always got to be something. We took out the thing. <laughs> Thus doing the thing. Well, of the games I've played today, this is the best one. <laughs> because I got past the very beginning, and that's a good sign. You know, that's a sign that it's accessible or something. There are a lot of things on the screen to dodge, and I find it's quite generous. My hitbox is smaller than my model, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's being generous to me. I think it's being generous to me. I'll give it points for that. This is definitely the best game I've played today because it was nice to me, okay? It's that easy. When you're designing, designing your game, how about you just be polite about it? Why don't you make the game be nice to the player? The game, the player's probably having a terrible day. <laughs> probably having a terrible day. <laughs> Being forced to play HIO games by, by Diego Luna. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll stop playing that game. Next game, we're, we're nearly done. Absolutely rampaging through the games. This time, Walking Taurus. So this one has a politeness scale, moving on from what I was saying earlier. Okay, let's walk. What? What? It's not going very well. Oh, you, you could tell me you could tell me one of the controls, walking tourists. Tell me a control. Go on, I dare you. Do you have to click? Wow. It's like turn based, but you don't even get to decide when to end the turn. That's that's bad. <laughs> that's the opposite of what I'm looking for in my game design quest. I thought it was going to be novel. I thought it was going to be charming. 
I, th I didn't think it was going to be non-consensually turn-based. <laughs> I, I thought you'd get. I thought the number would go up when you did the thing. No, no, you're not even going to make the number go up. And why is the number written on a grid? L looks like you wrote this on graph paper and stuck it onto the screen, but it's a game. <laughs> like, I guess. Oh wait, that's the aesthetic. Holy shit! There's an aesthetic. Okay, you get points. Yeah, okay. I just realised everything I'm complaining about is deliberate as usual. You, you, you get many points. Great game. I walk past another. Maybe I'm supposed to walk into them. You know, when you call your number politeness, makes me think I shouldn't walk into people. Okay, start hunting them down. No, we're having another non-consensual turn moment. We can't do it. I don't... These controls are so unintuitive and unresponsive. This is trash. This is pure fucking trash, walking tourist. I'm disappointed in you because this looks like it could be good. But I could not get beyond the first screen. And that's an incredibly impolite game design. It didn't even have a goddamn main menu. Alright, not even a main menu. Have the courtesy to have a main menu where it says, like, click to move. Or something like... Have the courtesy. I'm out of here. Next one. Analog. Oh, it's just some PDF files. Well, that saves time. Let's open file 7 of these PDF files. Oh my... What the Christ is this? I'll look. All right, I'm going to look at what this is. All right. Five Ways to Help You Get a Job by Guy DeRosa. It's a funny old industry games. It's kind of like the story of the weird, underestimated kid growing up with annoyingly successful siblings, TV and film. Yes, he's bitter. Let's see what else he has to say. Suddenly coming out of nowhere to become the bell of the ball, or in this case, a multi-billionaire. Oh, he's bitter boasting. Yes. Thinking of freelancing. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm the only freelancer who's allowed, says Stephen Hay. Hey, fuck off. Stop it. Stop freelancing. There's only so much work. I'm based in Manchester, and while it's the best city in the UK, citation needed. It isn't teeming with opportunities for games marketing directors. I've, because there are, there are only so many games marketing directors anywhere. You can't blame Manchester for your problems. <laughs> Try becoming a games marketing director somewhere else, fuckface. I'm sorry. I mean, who's the real bitter one here? All I know is it's someone else. Comics. Come on, pie. Figuring things out for yourself is the only freedom anyone has. Use it. Oh, he's talking to himself. <laughs> I understand. I understand art. That's it. He takes his hand, puts a glove on, puts a hat on, gets a gun, goes on the bus. So comical. The only good bug is a dead bug. A reference. However, did you get a job here? Decoding bugs. You see, like a programming bug, he was going to shoot it. Like in Starship Troopers. And who's this character? Is this Kobayashi from Kobayashi's Dragon Maid? It better be. <laughs> I've got so much to say about this comic. I'm going to make an entire cinematic universe out of this comic. This is such good advice they're giving out here. Like, give yourself money for housing, food, and healthcare. Are you struggling? Have you considered just paying your fucking self? That's where money comes from. Oh, I get it. I have to pay myself. That's why I don't have any money. But under promise. Get into reality. You're watching This Is Content right here. <laughs> Alright. Have fun with friends. Me and Diego are having a great time reading Analog Fanzine 008. I don't know where this came from. I don't know who's writing it. I don't know who's designing it. It's just black text on a white background. Nice magazine. Couldn't afford ink in the printer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Feels like it could be slightly more colourful. How about sometimes the font's bold? Maybe, maybe they did do that. Deal with overwhelm. I will not. I won't even finish writing that sentence. I'm so overwhelmed. <laughs> okay, I'm just not gonna do it. Don't make medical decisions without a psychiatrist. Fuck you! I'm splitting my personality and the other side's Diego Luna and there's nothing you can do about it. Analog fanzine 008. Now let's play the next game. <clears throat> As I was saying, uh, radiators and drainers. What? <laughs> Diego, are you a radiator or a drainer? <laughs> well, Devin, I can do both of those things for you. <laughs> this next game's looking pretty good. It's a black fucking screen. Welcome to the next level of video game. It was called 
Oh, it was called Detective Bot, and it's not just a black screen. This is a major breakthrough in game design. <laughs> also, I thought the commentary would be better if I spoke with a bottle in between me and the microphone, so it makes this echoing sound like a robot. Hello, I am Detective Bot. This looks like it might be a real game. <laughs> costume? Holy shit! It suddenly started playing loud music. I would love to change my costume. We could put a moustache on. We could be fucking purple! Say, okay, that's it. That's the costume we've done. This, finally a good fucking game. Finally. Make a save. Oh my god. How long did it take to get a real game out of it? <laughs> This is a loading screen. So meta. I'm laughing. Diego's laughing in the back. You can't hear him because there's a bottle in front of the mic. Right. Press X to save item. What? What? <laughs> no! Don't be weird and confusing. Be a game. Be a game you can play with one hand holding a bottle cap and the other hand holding a bottle in front of your face. I refuse to play the game. <laughs> Please work anyway. Please be voice activated. <laughs> it is actually, yeah, in the, in the, in another window. It's trying to run Steam VR. This is another game that's actually a VR game. Why does HAO have so many amateurish VR games? Well, whatever. Let's see how good this is. Oh no, it's got fucking quop movement control. It's a meme game. <laughs> okay, good. Finally found a meme game to play. Can I? Can I only move? Oh, you only control one leg. Oh, that's 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 innovative. Stay calm. Don't go. Don't be mad, Devin. <laughs> don't be mad, Devin. Maybe, maybe it's somehow good that you can only control one of your legs. <laughs> Rebellions were built on hope, <laughs> Devin. Yes, yes. Okay. So the goal is to push open the door, but I I can't reach the door with my leg. It can't be over already. It it can't be over. I am gradually moving towards the door <laughs> with my one leg. I feel like, was it meant to be like this? Are there more controls? Is it meant to be like this? Guys, surely not. I am actually doing it. The door's opening. Oh, we can move the camera. This is good. This is good. <laughs> We're all having fun, right, Diego? <laughs> Remember, you have to under-promise. Swap legs. Ah. Oh my god, this is much better than I expected. Let's do that again. Holy shit. Okay, finally, finally, something new. Innovation. This is precisely the shit I was looking for. You have to click to switch legs and move one step at a time. Now this is new. It's good. I love the way it lunges. The physics are great. I have to walk up the stairs. I have to raise my foot or hand with Q or E. Like this. Oh my god. This is sensational. The next level of Quop. Quop for the future. 3D Quop on my PC. I'm honored. I'm honored. I never thought I'd live to see the good fucking day with 3D Quop on my PC. Bro, that's good enough. Can I get the key card for the chief's office? Let's press X to save item thing. No, please. I want my toy boat. <laughs> what? At the end of the day, there's only one problem. Quop move controls are fucking terrible. <laughs> They're the worst. <laughs> the second it gives you an objective, like go somewhere, you're like, oh, I can't just do it. <laughs> like, it's a real chore to move somewhere. If this game gets any more complex than just weirdly striding around this room, maybe this wouldn't be the most fun. Was there a reason why games don't control like this? <laughs> like, at first I was like, wow, this is amazing. I've never played a game that controls like this. Maybe... Maybe, maybe people tried to make games controlling like this in the past and decided they shouldn't? <laughs> I don't know. I'm enjoying this more than the other games, even though I'm not, I'm not confident this, this would work for anything more than about 30 seconds of gameplay, but okay. Look around the room for characters and clues. Oh no. I'm actually holding the door now. Somehow I grabbed the door. <laughs> now I can't get away from it. Why am I controlling my hands now? It's like some new mechanic was introduced. I thought I was controlling the feet. Now it's controlling the hands. How do I get it back on the fucking feet? <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's so good. No, this is really good. No, all games should control like this. I, I just realized that all games should control like this. It's essentially 
one step away from being quite controllable, and that would be having the controls on the screen all the time, because the... <laughs> The way you switch between using your hands and your feet is something to do with the clicking, but that's also how you switch between left and right. So like, I think it just needs to be there all the time. No. Christ, no. Please, no. No. Oh! What a save! What a maneuver! What a game! Now a right click to change the hand, space to press the button. Oh, Christ. Oh, that was what you were supposed to do. Okay, now what do I do? Switch to my... F oh no, switch to... I don't know how... I think I... Did I die? Or something? <laughs> in my confusion, in my inability to select the foot that I wanted, the thing I was complaining about earlier. Somehow, now none of the limbs move anymore. And I'm stuck halfway... Like, I... This button moves this thing that I'm on, so if I fall off, that will be a game-breaking bug. I'll be soft-locked if I fall off this thing right now, and I can't move. Is that what they were doing? They stopped you from moving because if you fell off, it would soft-lock the, soft the game. But because it also stopped, <laughs> because I accidentally let go of the button, I now can't reach the end. So I've done it. I've done it. I found a game-breaking exploit, quote-unquote, a counter-exploit. A soft-lock. We did it. None of the buttons do anything. Cool. Well, we managed to kill the character in the game. This was by far the best game we played so far. Real good. I love walking around. I love the physics. How quickly would this get annoying? I don't know. So far, I got annoyed with it after the first five seconds, then thought, no, it's good. Then got annoyed with it, then thought, no, it's good. Then got annoyed with it, then thought, no, it's good. And now it's broken. So now I guess I think it's bad again. But, but you know, if, if this game hadn't been broken, I would have thought that it's good. And that's enough for me. Put the stamp of good on it. That's it. I finally found at least one good Itch.io game. Maybe some of the other times I played a game there was a good one. I've now, I've since forgotten. I don't know. This was pretty good. This is pretty good. There's one more game to play though. And then I'm free for this video. The final game. Time. Oh, it's an HTML. Oh, it's another website based game. What's it going to be? Guys, it's Devin from the future here. <sighs> a time of tungsten.html turned out to be the ride of a lifetime so it needs to be its own video get hyped i'm saying this somewhat ironically but i, I still haven't finished it it's this this huge literary adventure it's like a visual novel without the visuals and it's not a novel <laughs> text it's text and you can, you're going to see my analysis of the large amount of very intriguing text to be found inside at uh, time of tungsten html slapping the mic old school in the next video it's gonna have to be its own video i don't know how long it's gonna take it could be hours it could be hours but it's all gonna be worth it you will be on the edge of your seat because you're so desperate to leave the room <laughs> okay it's, it's gonna be real good so for now we'll just leave itch.io here almost everything <laughs> turned out to be terrible okay it, it really went against my genuine expectations that i would see good stuff <laughs> in my itch.io adventures. I've still got 95% of the adventure to go, so I guess there probably is good stuff out there. But I, I'm demoralized, I'm beaten up. We'll come back to itch.io after playing some real games. That'll probably be in like three years or something at the pace I'm making these videos. So anyway, thanks for watching this content. The rest of this content, the final and gigantic section of this adventure will be in the next video. And it's going to be real... That's all I'll say. <laughs>